Hey everybody, this is going to be my last video on the Brewerhoog version of Ambush. Um, this is the final version I settled on. Now, there are a lot of flexible cards in here. Those being Regis and Villain Tretonmare, most certainly, and Kieran is also a flexible silver. You can also decide on your, um, your mixture of bronze spells and some whether or not you're going to go three Dragoons or three Hawker supports. Now let's talk about the guaranteed card that I would put in this deck is Morin. Morin is probably the most underestimated ambush card in the game. I'm consistently hitting harpies and all these other things with her. Now of course when players become more familiar with ambush they're not going to play a harpy into Morin. But if you do that's 18 points of value for Morin. You get 6 from her base strength and you get 12 for removing the harpy. Because the eggs don't spawn if Morin hits the harpy. Now the fact that you can pull Morin with Isengrim is huge. That means that they can't just pass into uh, Morin. So if you do that and you hit a Harpy, that's 25 points worth of value. You get 18 for Morin and 7 from Isengrim. And I last time I checked, a 25 point gold card that you don't... One card that doesn't give your opponent any card advantage. That's ridiculous. Amounts of value right there. Now, of course, it's not 25 points all in this round, but it's still pretty big. Um, now, the main strategy here is to play Teruvial into a Sapper into King of Beggars. You can even pull King of Beggars from your deck with Booverhoo because it's not unlikely that your opponent's going to be 27 points ahead of you at some point in this game because you don't have large tempo plays outside of using your leader ability or Isengrim. I have Regis Higher Vampire just for those certain matchups, like if you needed to eat one of your opponent's Reaver Hunters from their deck so they can't pull it with Henselt, or, and I have the Villain Tretmarath because the fact that you can play Truvial into um, Sapper into Villain Tretmarath is a fairly safe play. Now, of course, if they lock one of these two cards, then it becomes vulnerable to Villain Tretmarath, but it... You do what you do. More likely than not, they're going to shackle Villain Tretmarath. You also have the ch chance to do Yaven and protect your cards from being scorched from your own Villain Tretmarath with Yaven. Yaven. That's an option, of course. Um, without further ado, I'm going to show you two games. And if you're really interested in watching a lot of gameplay, I'm going to put a bunch of unlisted videos in the description. It's just more than, it's like two hours worth of gameplay down there. Just look at those links and you'll have a lot of fun if you really like Ambush Archetype, okay? Bye. So the first game I'm going to show you is against a Dagon player. Who is, uh, I would say, a higher level than me much and a higher rank. Now this is casual, but I was having some issues with my internet at the time, and I was not particularly happy with how it was um, behaving. So here I am mulliganing at Morin. Why? Because Morin is one of the strongest cards to combo off your leader or your or Isengrim. So no here mercy! I play Isengrim. I get a total of. Ele um, 13 points on the board, but the 13 points isn't what makes this combo really effective. It's this. Okay, let's do some math here. Manticore, I should do removed the a harpy. The harpy was going to put on six strength He's onto the board. Humans. However, the, the harpy was also going to bring in six strength into the next round, so I effectively removed 12 points from the board with more. If you combine that the fact that I only played one card, that was 25 points worth of play right there. I play the uh, Dragoon, and the Dragoon acts as a deterrent against my opponent playing this round out for a long period of time. So my opponent is deciding whether or not they want to use a bear and replace one of the Harpy eggs with a bear. I know this because that's the only card that would ever target a Harpy egg. Now if he did that, he would get 14 points onto the board, about, and he would win the round but he would go card down. I actually am surprised my opponent didn't go for that play. They might have miscalculated. So 
because it spawns a harpy, which is three points, and the bear is twelve, so it's fifteen points together, and you subtract the one point off the board. It's a really high tempo play. My opponent instead decides to play um, the fiend and just pass out the round that way instead of winning this round. It's really surprising if you consider what's going on here. Going into the next round, my strategy is just to see if I can carry in a lot of points into the next round. I can't just simply pass because it's not going. My opponent's not going to play anything because they have the harpy, eight, the little harpies on the board. As usual, I'm going to start all over, start right with the Dragoon, and it's going to start buffing things in my hand. You might say, well, this hand looks terrible. There's no gold cards in it. Eh, it's, I don't really win with my gold cards. You'll regret your mom ever now, squirting I'm going to you buff out. up Bran. I don't need to have Bran more than like 12 points in any game, but I don't also want to overly dedicate to Bran, uh, Bran. because most games than not, I'm not going to get a full 12 points off of her, except like if I'm killing a bear. So my opponent uses an Azure Thunder and that is annoying but it's not the end of the world. We still have the Hawker supports and they're technically a three turn Dragoon because the Dragoon takes three turns just to get the same value as the Hawker support. Now here I'm contemplating what I want to do but I'm like, uh, let's just thin my deck. And so I go with the uh, first light into Rally. And I pull a uh, Sapper, which is not the most fortunate thing. My opponent cannot pass, so I'm taking advantage of that. So here's that bear car we saw earlier that my opponent could have played in round one. Everybody makes mistakes. So here, I probably used that a turn too early considering what I could have drawn from that. It would have probably been better just to play the Elven Mercenaries and hope I get a Sapper. Okay, my opponent's playing a gold card, which is... He's getting an okay value card. I would have probably gone for the, uh... Humans, Warren, us. perhaps, to kind of pressure me out of playing anything. I'm so tired. A storm is coming. Let's enjoy okay. the weather while we still can. I have no intention of using the Shackles on a, uh... Dragoon, because I might want to have that Shackles for later. So far, I've baited out one of my opponent's weather cards. You might notice that I've also taken Avalok out of this particular deck. I just felt that Avalok was giving my opponents too many answers in the current state of the, the storm thing. Is coming. So I'm still Let's enjoy just the weather while we thinning still my can. deck. My opponent cannot pass. They will lose if they pass. Onward, fry head! I can say that. So I get a Dragoon, which is... There weren't any other bronze cards that I could have drawn. Uh, bronze units that I could have drawn, and so... It was guaranteed to get a Dragoon there. So my opponent decides to play... Um, this is unfortunate. That card got buffed twice with the Dragoon, so that means that there aren't any other cards in his hand that are getting the buffs from the Dragoon, and he decided to play it in this round, the round I, I've been intentionally pushing points into my hand for the next round. So I'm gonna, I'm thinking about what I wanna do, but right here I'm gonna pass. Like, I'm like, well, if my opponent um, passed at this point, they would lose the game, but there's no point in forcing that right now. So I'm gonna pass. There aren't very many ways my uh, opponent could <laughs> win this game outright. Given the fact that I have a King of Beggars play, which is 27 points with one card, it's better than the Crones. No matter what my opponent plays, I can always take advantage of Truvial into Sappers into uh, Bruvert that pulls a King of Beggars. It's a huge play. All I have to do is get my opponent to play a bunch of points. And they did. Now, the Dragoon did buff the one of the Crones by one, but that's not the end. Uh, I shouldn't play the Sapper first. I should play the Teruvial. 
because the sapper takes two turns to flip and so I want to make sure that I don't get those 11 points counted towards my score. It's important that I put that into the um, siege row. Kind of. Because I want to split my points as much as possible. In case of an Igni. Even though I get more points for having more things on the same row with Truvial, I don't trust myself here. Because I know some players play Igni. I'm not seeing it so much at this player's rank. So he decides to go with a Fog. It's unfortunate that this Fog is not going to get as much value as it could have. Because there's, there's only going to be one I unit effectively no on the side of the board for most of the match. Nothing like a dwarf to get you. When Truvial flips, it's going to buff it again to be over that. So my opponent is 27 points ahead of me. And with just one card, I go from what looks like 0 points to 26. Oh, I'm sorry. It's a 26 point play. Okay. Sometimes do the math wrong. Now, this is why I put Kieran in the deck. It's just more universally so useful. There's more You're situations where I want to do something like this. And then um, this is awfully obviously a good time to emote. Like my opponent's keeping a shackles in case I shackle Succubus, and I can just say thanks. Thanks, my friend. Now another card that can do that is um, what do you call it? Uh, the Brigade. So if I was still playing Brigades in this deck, which is still a viable card, I could move my I could have moved my King of Beggars to another lane just like that. And since my opponent already played his movement card, he doesn't get that option of moving my King of Beggars back to the Succubus lane. Which is unfortunate for that. He should not, he should have played the Griffin instead of the, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, the Drowner, yes, there it is. The Drowner from last round, and then we would have tied this round. 33 to 33 because he'd had the two buffs from um what do you call it the dragoon there you go <laughs> i got it sorry about that sometimes i forget my words i can remember everything let's redo that Okay, this is a Skellige game. Now, if you look at the top, you'll see that I have two losses. Those losses are actually because my internet caved out, which is one of the reasons why I did a casual game earlier. It's annoying. Uh, this is kind of an ideal hand. You want to have as many Dragoons in your hand as possible. Now, Isengrim is not something that I want to play right off the bat usually against um, a Skellica player because Isengrim's real purpose is to pull Morin because Morin is like Set a huge value table, I think people are interested drink. in her a ton. The fact that you can pull her with a gold card like this that's 7 strength is nice. He's at least 18 points because, you know, Morin's worth 11 so... 18 point gold that doesn't give your opponent any card advantage. The last time I checked was pretty good. <laughs> I yeah. So my opponent's gonna. Re those are those two key cards that my opponent has. Peace with humans. I buy that. For winning the round. Um, so here you can see that my dragoon got buffed. That means it's protected from. Slaughter them um, to a man. What do you call it? The shield maidens. Since it's not in the red. This is one of the benefits of running Dragoons against Skellige, is that it counters the bear a little bit. Bow before modern Freya. So here my opponent's using that. I'm going to shackle it because that's his win condition. Oh, I'm going to shackle it in a little bit. Right here I'm getting confused because I have a graphical glitch. My Dragoon is at 7 strength. I just can't no see mercy! it. So I decide to pull out Morin. Typically, I pay more in a little later since the bear won't get killed by it. Okay. I decide to clear the weather. My opponent already put one of his weathers into the graveyard. And since I'm not running an Avalok, I don't have a risk of 
pulling the uh, bear back into his deck. Manticore, so here my opponent made a trick. mistake and decided to uh, revive, I mean play um, Mithrak, which is an okay card. It's very good if you're running Igni. Okay, my opponent's probably sick of my Dragoons getting value. It's okay. Mm. Here, you can really think about what do you want to do. Um, I'm of the mind that, oh, well, I got a ton of value from my Dragoons last round, so I'm going to see if I can pressure out my opponent this round. If I, The longer I take, the harder it is for my opponent to get value out of his cards, because he has Veteran and various other things that he's benefiting from that I don't want him to have. So I want him to have He's as few cards humans. in his hand as possible, I and I want him to make use as many of his uh, uh, leader cards. I mean, like You'll regret your gold cards and stuff like that as possible out. too. And if I can bait out the rest of his weather, that would be nice too. Modern so he's going to probably pull patient, out the axe but she brooks since no insult. Wind condition. This is not a normal deck, in my opinion. I rarely see something like this these days. Here I'm going to just play uh, Kieran because I'm going to be able to lock Humans his guy. To be trusted. Even if he unlocks it, it's not that bad. What do you need? With Mythbrock, he can uh, kill off the giant. Now, if he was a little bit more fortunate, he would be running um, this is a Skellige card that does five damage to a target, and then buffs cards in your graveyard. I forget what it's called. He'd be running that. I lost my chance to use Shackles. It's not that bad. That is okay. your Here I'm actually play? afraid that he would use Trilly? the uh, fog, but he ended up using because like the fog would have hit two targets. Would have been really annoying. But instead he goes with the bear. Um, I don't want to remove too many cards from my hand, but I'm actually seeing how this goes. I have the perfect combo into uh, King of Beggars, so I'm going to take that advantage of that by not playing any points for the next two cards. So I decided to play Truvial, which doesn't count any, as any points on my side of the board. And I'm gonna put her in the advantageous row of the Cedro. Now if my opponent has Weather, there's, I at least still have the Clear Skies in my hand. Okay, the bear is not is going to still hit one of my cards, which is going to be King Blue of Mountains! But he's not going to be able to hit my uh, face down cards, making that card effectively a seven point bronze, which is mediocre at best. He's not getting any value from his clan Tursok Axeman here. Okay. Since I decided to pressure out this round, and I know that most of these kind of players play Renew, since they want to revive. Uh, Hjalmar. We, I take we. advantage of that and force him out to play his re uh, Resurrector. Now, I'm surprised spot. he used it, period, but he did. So, how this will get me up to... It'll go up to 15 and get knocked down to 14 because of the bear. It, um, one of the benefits of King of Beggars is that if your opponent uses like a Dimeridium Bomb or anything on him, he's still 15 strength silver, which is great. So I effectively did 20, uh, 25 points there if you count the bear strike, 26 if you count the <laughs> if you count it before the bear hit uh, King of Beggars. Okay, the shackles actually doesn't do anything, and that is a mistake on my opponent. 
He should have shackled Boy, the face down card, and not every player knows that. He should have shackled um, the card that was obviously. Boy, if my coins uh, to you, go kiss a trivial. dog. Need its time. Now it wouldn't have won him the game. No! Per se. Because I would still have six points on the board. From Truvial. Well, actually, 10 points. Or 12 points, because Truvial was 12, so, yeah. I 2 0 my opponent, and I was very happy about that. He couldn't get all three of the Shield Maidens out because he had put one of them in the graveyard to be revived later. He had unfortunately drew into one of them. 